Hey guys, Dan Lenny here with another episode of the How to Scale a Video Business Podcast. Today's episode features Somi Aryan, a tech philosopher, investor, and filmmaker from the UK. Somi and I did an episode last week, which I really strongly recommend you check out, where we talked about what it took to make her documentary and how that led to a book deal, an actual paid for book deal with a business publisher, and other opportunities that came off the back of making that documentary. Today, we're going to go and have quite a serious conversation about where our industry is going in terms of tech because um, we both feel that there's a very real threat with machine learning to things like editing and and how our industry is going to be impacted by machine learning over the next five to ten years. Fascinating insights from Somi who's an absolute leader in her field. She's a LinkedIn top voice. I know you're going to love this. If you do enjoy these uh, episodes, please do subscribe and also please do leave a review it really helps us on your favorite podcast platform to get the message out there and please do share it with other people who you think might benefit please do enjoy the show we're recording this in the middle of the pandemic yes and the businesses that have cash in the bank who are nimble Mm -hmm. are sitting pretty just now i would imagine any business that's over leveraged and scaled too fast is in a very, very tight position. Exactly. Absolutely. And, because, this should, and this should be a lesson to us all, a really valuable lesson to us all, that going too fast, going too big, buying too much gear, having too much at risk, like there, there are probably, and this, this is a tough, a tough thing for many, many families just now, is that I've always maintained that the majority of the population are two paychecks away from financial ruin. Yes. And that financial ruin is now potentially upon them. And that's going to be a really tough lesson for a lot of people. But I just wanted to kind of really reinforce that, that if you go too big and you leverage too much, it creates really negative stress. Yes, absolutely. One thing that I uh, understood very quickly uh, when I was creating the documentary was that you don't need incredible gear. because Remember Moore's Law. I talk about Moore's Law a lot in my book. And, uh, you know, uh, I can't even remember how much of it my editor took out. But, uh, but I talk about this exponential growth of, you know, technology. Uh, and remember, the power of technology is doubling every other year. So the iPhone that I have now, you know, I know that by, by the next iPhone, it, it will be so much better you know, and, and after that, it will be so much better. And we are getting to a point now that I can imagine that within the last, so within the next few year, two years, two, three years, I mean, that's how fast it's growing. I will probably not even be using my GH5s. So then I need to find a way to justify. And I mean, even already with this COVID-19, this is happening in that, you know, I'm trying to, for example, one of my clients now is in South of France and I'm getting his son to record him on the iPhone and send me the footage and then we edit it and put it. So that's one step closer to the person saying, I don't need you, but he is going to need me because of the building business model, model that I built. So if you think that you can create a cookie cutter business and scale it, uh, you're wrong. It's not going to happen. You might do it for a short amount of time, but um, because of the way that technology is growing, and that's everything that that book is about, because of the way that technology is growing, you are not going to be able to do that. You know, you are not even going to be able to necessarily, uh, say, create a business out of being an influencer. Even that has got a short time span there's a whole section on my in my book uh, on the influencer culture Uh, and the reason is that we are entering in an era where there's going to be an increasing overlap between the digital uh, you know virtual world and digital world and and the uh, physical world there are already instagram accounts of digital influencers you know virtual influencers that are not real people that are in render that are you know able to as long as you know if see anything that can be replicated will be replicated 
So you want to be creating a business model that you that nobody can replicate. That it's not that nobody can replicate, but what it is that it is it's going to take so much hard work that many people will give up. That will be like you know. It, it, there are so many things you need to find that in, inner talent, something in you that is going to help you do something special. Don't be a headline reader, be a deep diver. You know, I was like, most people, most people read the headlines. You know, I, I'm not a headline reader. You know, I read the, 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 to the very uh, footnote because the, the proof is in the footnote, you know, it's in the, it's in the details, you know, it, it, you've, you, you know, when I read a book, I also read all the books that that book was based on, you know, all the references, you know, I look at the references and, and the most interesting quotes in that book, I'm like, Oh, I need to read that book. That was about, so when you, when you think of it that way, I've not built a business that is going to generate multi-millions for me. I might generate multi-millions from my other investments, but my business, my core business is not a multi-million dollar uh, or pound business. It's very niche. It can be scaled, but it can be scaled within limit and it takes time. And it's, and I don't mind it because it provides me with a nice income that I can support, you know, it's a, it's a lifestyle business, you know, um, like, uh, Daniel Priestley talks about this He's like, there, there are a few different business types, right? So there's the lifestyle business, which is up to about 12 people, a team of about 12 people. And you have no ambition of making it bigger. You want to focus on, you know, uh, generating a high level of income within that, um, you know, and, and everybody has a nice, comfortable uh, life. And usually those are business models that not many people try to replicate. You know, it, it, it's where most people want to go for the big thing. Uh, and we have, um, we have a saying in Persian, which says, trying to pick up and throw a big stone is a sign of never being able to do it, you know? So, so it's like, you know, like being, uh, to be uh, a lot of, you know, there's a, there's a chapter in my, my book on critical thinking and it's about being, thinking critically. There's a whole section on thinking critically about your success, you know? So, uh, we need to think critically. And, and I thought critically about my success and I had to redefine success to myself. Um, and, uh, so I'd say, don't go for scale and don't uh, rely too much on technology. So the whole premise of the book is that we need human skills. We need to develop our human skills. Our human skills are emotional intelligence, critical thinking, contextual creativity. And my business, my, this new business model is built on contextual creativity, which I will just explain, and mindfulness. And, the, the, and mindfulness, I, I argue, is at the core of all of these um, because because mindfulness what it does it it helps you be fully engaged you know most of us are not fully engaged we are just uh, going through the motion we are on autopilot and we are trying to uh, follow the trend the you know uh, I used to get I used to get even until like three or four years ago I used to get uh, really frustrated when I looked at entrepreneur, you know, magazine and, and like looked at social media and I'm like all these people who are, you know, becoming successful, you know, uh, making million dollar businesses in a short time. And I was like, how are they doing it? But, you know, why can't I do it? And, and then uh, I became realistic about my background, my, um, you know, uh, where I come from, what are, what are some of the things that are values to me? And I realized that my value was not money. You know, m my value was something bigger. My value is this, the thrill of learning, the thrill of, you know, gaining knowledge, understanding, you know, that sort of, I'm a seeker, you know, I'm, I'm not a money seeker. I'm a knowledge seeker, you know? So, so, so it's, I think... So it just, just sounds like what you're saying. I just want to recap for those listening is that if you're a filmmaker right now, the, the skills you might be selling right now, which are editing and filming, you want to be thinking about 
becoming more of a producer, but not just a producer, a well-read producer, someone who yeah. understands technology and messaging, because that seems to me, and sorry to interrupt you there, I think it's an important point, yeah. is that yes. the, the filmmakers need to be pivoting now because yes. the future is never going to be the same. So That's they right. need to be thinking about how can you add value to not just the filming job, but the outcome the client's looking to achieve and, and exactly. go niche. Exactly. The, the, the key word you said here is the outcome that the client is looking to achieve. That's exactly the key word, right? So, you, so people are selling, filmmakers are selling the wrong thing. They are selling their filmmaking expertise. That's not what people are buying. What people are buying is a solution to their problem. So you need to find a market that resonates with you, that you can solve a problem in that market, which I found that market for us at the moment. That could change. See, one, one of the things that I, you've got to accept that nothing is permanent. You have to be ready to constantly pivot, constantly. You know, you can't say, oh, okay, I'm sorted for this year. Look, I honestly thought I was sorted for this year. By March, me and Lola looked at, you know, beginning of March, me and Lola looked at the amount of invoices that we had submitted and the contracts that we had already, uh, mm, uh, you know, uh, signed. And by, by the beginning of March, end of February, I remember I was on the phone to my friend Justine from Mary Claire. And I told her, yeah, I just had a great day with Lola. We went through everything together. By the end of February, we've already exceeded in terms of invoices and contracts. We've already exceeded the whole of last year in terms of our income, which means that we still have another 10 months to bring in so much more income. Look, a month later, it's exactly a month later, I've lost all of that. Decimated, all of that. decimated just gone all like that. that. Yeah. Yes. Like I've lost, you know, like some of my talks have been postponed, but yeah, I've lost a lot of money, a lot of money, you know? And, and it's like, you've got to be ready for that, you know? And, 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 yet, and yet you don't seem worried. No, I'm not worried. I'm not worried because I, um, for, for several reasons, I'm living in an Airbnb right now, right? So you could say that I should be very worried. You know, I've just come out of a uh, five-year relationship. I'm living in an Airbnb. I'm trying to buy a flat and it's been one problem after another. Um, there are several reasons why I'm not worried. One is that I love challenges because I feel like when there are challenges, there are not many people who have my resilience. And it, it, when every time there is challenge, it means there will be less competition after, after that. So if I can get through the challenge and come out of the other side, still being um, indispensable to my clients, uh, then, uh, uh, then I, I'm in a good place. And I'm taking this time. For me, my day hasn't changed. You know, honestly, I have been so busy. The only thing that has changed is that maybe I can go on a shoot. But most of my work with my clients is mental support on the phone, you know, which I'm doing anyway. And uh, the other thing is because I've invested in a few different businesses. So like, for example, in this situation where most people don't have enough work, Lola, who is my right hand, and I spent the whole of Friday, Saturday, uh, and Sunday working on the business plan document for one of the other businesses that I have invested in uh, because we had an investor meeting on Sunday afternoon. So I spent three days in the middle and she worked full time. She worked over time. You know, and, and she's so indispensable to me that 
I told her, well, you work so hard on the weekend, you can take the Friday off. But I'm already thinking, shit, if Lola takes the Friday off, what am I going to do? There's nobody else in my team that has the same level of, you know, I can't live without. And uh, well, I also have one other person abroad who is very, very uh, valuable to me. But, but um, that's what it means to be indispensable. So, you know, I'm indispensable to my clients because although they can't pay me right now, they're like, you know, Sami, just our business is shut down. So, but what, we, what are we doing? I haven't stopped working with them. I said, no problem. You can't pay. It's okay. We are still going to support you. You know, we are still going to create content for you from distance and we're still going to continue to do what we're doing for you. Um, and uh, once this is solved, then we will, um, you know, we continue. So, because I can afford to pay my team, right? So I'm taking the hit. So, my, so that my team is not out of a job. Maybe they will work part-time or four, three or four days a week for now. But, but my, my team are engaged. My clients are engaged. They feel extremely supported. They feel extremely grateful, you know. And, uh, and uh, with some of them, we've come up with an agreement to pay half during this period. Uh, and even then, to some of them, I've said, you don't, no, no rush wait until you get your government grant, grant. wait and why because i have cash flow i have which, cash which flow. is really like the number one smart move in a business is to yeah. start stockpiling cash i was saying to my clients middle of last year start stockpiling cash now because typically it goes quiet december january start stockpiling run your year on a 10 month year and those that did they're, they're relaxed just now. The people that are not relaxed um, are having to learn a very, very tough lesson. But you yeah. know, in business, we don't learn lessons from success. We learn lessons from failure. And, mm-hmm. and, and you know, I, I, my career went tits up in 2001 when I broke my leg and was told one day I can't be a cameraman anymore. I had to start again. Um, yeah. You know, I, I moved to Australia five years ago, started my business from scratch again. Um, went through the global financial crisis in 2009, 2010, had a, had a thriving business. So I, I just choose to be really like, I'm not naive. I'm optimistic and I'm pragmatic and I put cash aside and I don't buy fancy cars and I don't buy fancy stuff. I, I stockpile and that's why now I feel I've got breathing room. And it sounds like that's exactly the position you're in. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't buy anything, you know, it's like I, I have some nice stuff that is currently in the storage, you know, <laughs> that I haven't needed. You know, I've been living in this Airbnb with like just one skirt, you know, that I've been using to go to meetings and stuff, you know, and now then this has stopped. And uh, I have two bar man jackets that are in the storage that I don't miss. You know, that one of them was a... Uh, uh, a, a gift for my birthday, you know, like any designer shoes that are there that I just, I'm fine without them, you know? So I really think going forward, I mean, a lot of those things were gifts when I was in a relationship, but then now I'm not. And, and, and I'm thinking moving forward, I'm not going to buy designer clothes. I'm not going to spend money on those things. I'm investing. I'm investing in things that interest me because uh, you know what? despite like having 10 pairs of high heel shoes and I love shoes. And I think one of the things I want to do one day, I want to bring out my own shoe company, you know, my own shoes. And uh, actually I'm already working on my next book. Potentially I have the title in my mind, walking my walk in my shoes. And um, it's about why women have not been as successful as men in uh, business and uh, economy and, and, and politics art science everything in history so it's a it's a uh ex, you know kind of like historical um uh research on why women have not been as successful and then how technology can close uh, help us close that gap so so that's my next project my next book but um but yeah i love shoes but the thing is that i find myself most of the time uh, no matter if i have 30 pairs of shoes or or 10 or 
three, there are only one pair of shoes that I seem to be wearing all the time. <laughs> you know, that's the one that's the most comfortable, <laughs> you know, and I'm always wearing my leather trousers, which is the most comfortable thing. So also like 80, 90% of the time I'm wearing that stuff. So it's like, so just wear what is comfortable and don't spend money on bullshit. You know, you don't need fancy car. You know, you just, you need to, we are, we are going into a period of um, increasing uncertainty, increasing, like uncertainty is going to be the defining characteristic of the next few decades. And I don't know if you've read or heard of the book, The Singularity is Near, uh, which is very, very interesting uh, by Re uh, Ray Kurzweil. And um, it's a, it's a very interesting, like within the next 20 to 30 years, I'd say that humanity is changing massively because we are becoming increasingly able to manipulate our bodies, our minds. And um, so, so one of the companies that I've invested in is, uh, it's in biotechnology, bioelectronic technology. And it's an, it's a fascinating, fascinating area. So, the short story, the, the long, oh God, I don't know what the thing is, the medium that they, the, the, um, uh, the, the way to say, it, but essentially, but essentially you've got to uh, be sure that you can protect yourself through periods of uncertainty. Um, uh, so don't buy lots of gear. Uh, filmmaking is changing. Um, you know, maybe this is now the time to explain to you about the niche market that I chose for my business. So the niche market that I've chosen, and now we are currently in a, a process of revamping our website to be more focused around this, is built around this concept of transition architecture. So the idea is that we are already doing this. Um, so we, our niche market is thought leaders. It's like people who are, for example, uh, retired and want to start a new career, you know, a, a new consultancy or career, or people who are, most of them, so pretty much all of our clients are over 45, you know. So, so these are people who uh, either have a good level small business and they want to be known as an industry leader in their industry. Um, so, for example, one of our clients is um, uh, a property finder, and she works on a um, uh, you know she works on, on sort of high level. You know she finds property for for mostly kind of people who are coming from abroad. You know who want to buy property in London, and um, and it's a it's her business is quite niche in a way, right? So, but but we are building her profile as an industry leader on LinkedIn. So I'm leveraging my knowledge. So part of it is the video production, but, but part of it is my knowledge of LinkedIn, you know, and how I have used LinkedIn sales navigator to build, you know, our, um, uh, our audience essentially. So, so that's one of my clients. So, so we are building her. So it's kind of like PR, digital PR, um, digital PR marketing for thought leaders. So currently we have a handful of clients, so just under 10 clients that we are doing this for. And, uh, uh, and uh, um, two of those are, one of them is the MD of Steinway, which means that in addition to building his profile, we are also creating content for Steinway UK. Um, and another one of them is the uh, CEO of this bioelectronic company that I have invested in. So it means that we also get to create content for them. Uh, and that's part of my investment is the work that I did, that I do for them. So one thing I would recommend to people is look at investing, start looking at, you know, don't just think about here is my services, pay me 400 quid for my day. Think about how can you make yourself so in the, indispensable, find unique businesses where you can invest and say, look, uh, you know, what I can do for you. It, for, firstly, yes, I agree with being a producer. Don't, don't be just like 
um, a tool, you know, because it, it, any, anything, anybody can do that. So uh, if that is, if you have the ambition of building a business, it's not for everybody. Many people, you know, there's nothing wrong with uh, freelancing. Uh, there's nothing wrong with, you know, working as an employee uh, because that gives you a different kind of um, protection that many people prefer. You know, th what I'm talking about here is for people who want to build a business. If you want to build a business, build a business. Don't, uh, you know, don't be like halfway like this half. I don't work as an, inf uh, as a, as a freelancer. I'm a producer. You know, when people come to me, they say, can you film this? I say, no, I don't film this. It, but you know, we, you, I turn work down because I'm like my, my, uh, also another thing is I don't take any meetings. I do not go to meetings anymore. So I have Lola. She does, you know, because I have built a profile, you know, so, so people understand that I'm genuinely busy. I'm genuinely busy. It's like, you know, I'm working 16, 17 hours a day. So I don't take meetings. So there is no free meeting with Somi. If you want time with Somi, you pay for a strategy session and that is, that's how all of my clients that have now worked, that are now working with me, all of them, with the exception of Steinway, because Steinway, I developed a relationship with them over three, four years. Literally every single client I have, they have first paid for a, a, a strategy session for me, with me before they became a client. What that means is that they value your time. They know the value of your time. They know that, you know, I don't even get on the phone call with them. I don't sell. I, I, I agree with you. I, 100%. I, I have just and recently so, added to my website the yeah. same thing. I, mm -hmm. I have a 30-minute strategy session, a 60-minute and a 90-minute. And if you just want to ask me a question, it's $97. And I'll record you a video answer. Because mm -hmm. in the filmmaking industry, I, I increasingly have people saying, hey, I love your show. Could I just ask you a quick question? It's like, great to connect. Of course you can. Um, over here is the options. And it's yeah. interesting how many people suddenly don't have the question anymore, which is great. Yeah. Because yeah. I value my time, you value your time, and therefore, when people pay, they pay attention. Yeah, and exactly. So, so like, uh, they're, they're one of the best books that I read early on uh, when I started you know, thinking about building the business in this way uh, it, it, it's a book called Oversubscribed by Daniel Priestley that I... I love I, that book. It's phenomenal. It's an it incredible is, book. And I love Daniel. You know, I, I did his KPI course as well. I wouldn't say, you know, the KPI course was great. Um, uh, but, you know, I think if somebody doesn't have necessarily... You know, I wouldn't say that the KPI course or, or any course will change your life. You know, the, the changes that I made are not as a result of that. They are as a result of, you know, that, that sort of was like, a, uh, you know, it was a good like starting point. And the, the thing that I did with you, it was definitely a starting point of like switching something. But ultimately, you need to gain the courage to change your business model. And the, the reason why people don't gain that courage is because they haven't done their homework. You know, because if you down inside you, if you believe that you are not worth that, that you don't have that worth, if you are not clear to yourself, what is it that makes you special and different? Not in an egoic way. I told you, like, like I'm losing my ego day by day, you know, not in an egoic way, but in the sense of I have 16 waking hours in the day you know i'm trying my best to get seven eight hours i'm actually wearing this ring now which is like it's it, um uh, uh monitors my sleep and my, all my movement and everything and like i'm trying my best you know to get enough sleep so that i have so okay let's say i have 16 waking hours in a day right i have to have time to go for a walk i have to have time to uh, meditate so i need some time for myself for ref self-reflection i need enough time to eat so really, when I say I, I work 16, 17 hours of the day, most of that is in the form of I'm listening to an audiobook while I'm eating or walking or whatever. 
because when I say I'm working, when I'm reading or listening to a book, that's working because I'm, I'm always, you know, uh, developing. So, so I have put so much effort into my own development to a point that you can give me any context, almost any context, you know, from biotechnology to uh, real estate to future of work, you know, like to anything, right? And and I will be able to create, uh, you know, or, or, or direct my uh, client to get the best out of them and to give them ideas that they hadn't thought of, you know? And that's what happened in, in uh, our work with Steinway, you know, like I've encouraged them to start thinking about creating content, you know, and I've, um, me and my team now, Lola also helps with the, with the script, Elizabeth helps with the scripts. So we come up with suggestions, uh, scripts for them, for Steinway, for my client in, uh, you know, real estate, everything. We come up with suggestions with them, uh, say on, for example, with my client in real estate, I said, you should start talking about the economy of, um, you know, house buying. You should start talking about smart houses, how technology is changing, uh, you know, the house market, how, how uh, we work is changing the housing market, how working from home, how, you know, all these things. So she has gone from being a, a property finder to being a, comment a commentator uh, from an economic point of view. So now we are putting her forward to journals, to magazines, to you know, uh, websites. So, so what we do is no longer just video production. We are promoting her, uh, you know, uh, we are uh, promoting her to, uh, you know, we're putting her up for speaking engagements, you know? So it's like building someone's profile. It's the bigger picture because we look at the person and say, what is this person's problem? How can I solve that problem? Their problem is to build their profile to, uh, I suppose you couldn't call it a problem, but their challenge is to build their profile so that they can get more business. So my goal is to generate more business for her and build her profile. My goal is not to make her some videos and charge her for that. Well, Somi, I think that's a beautiful place to kind of wrap up our conversation for now because it, it's so valuable. And I think some people will struggle with this concept. But what I love is that you've, you've, you've ridden you know, the road, you've, you've put, you know, rubber on the ground, you've invested financially, you've made content, you've pivoted your business multiple times and essentially have created your own genre. So yeah. where can people learn about the book? Where can people learn about you? Where can they find you and connect with you? Well, depending on when you're going to put this out, uh, we are just launching the somiarian.com website. So from now on, everything will be, everything to do with my personal work will be there. So Smart Cookie Media is going to be uh, focused on this concept of transition architecture, which is where we help thought leaders transition, you know, uh, to, to build their profile and transition and navigate through the impact of technology on their business. That's what that business is going to be about, Smart Cookie Media. But, um, uh, but then in terms of my book, my content, that would be on somiarian.com. Well, well, we'll link to that on the blog post to do with this episode. And we'll also connect, we'll put a link to your um, LinkedIn profile as well, where people yeah. can connect with you. Uh, Tommy, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's so, so exciting to have, you know, we met at a Sony event at Pinewood Studios, I don't know how many years ago, and you were interested in the camera. Oh, it would yeah. have been a oh, good eight, yeah. nine, something yeah. years ago. <laughs> And, and, and what, I, what I love about being able to do this podcast is, is having these conversations and to be able to connect again with you. And, and thank you so much for sharing what I'm, I'm certain if people are really listening will be life-changing information. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Dan. And you definitely have had a big impact on that journey. You know, you were one of the people who helped uh, with that light bulb moment. I think that you have given the truth is I feel that like you have given that light bulb moment to a lot of people. Not everybody may have taken it. And I think I'm one of those people that did take it and, you know, turn it into something. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope you got a huge amount of value from that episode. 
If you're looking for additional support or resources to support your business journey, then head over to denlenny.com where you can uh, get a whole heap of other resources, free downloads, and access all the other episodes in this series. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time.